Hey peeps, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we are going to dissect and analyze the Vapor API template from zero lines of code. We are creating our own application in Vapor and understand what all these files are actually, um, or how these files are actually related to each other and where's our entry point in our application and how does it actually run? So let's dive right into it and create a new project based on, on the API template at the place we want. For me, it's, it's desktop and call it, for example, vapor new skyward sort. And while it's cloning the template, yep, we are now going into our project, not a while, but after uh, we are going inside our project and call vapor Xcode dash yes to can generate an Xcode project, fetch all dependencies as well, and open it right away. All right, so once it's uh, done and opening our Xcode project, we can uh, align it to the right, and let's just prepare a browser to the left as well, and have a look. I mean, in one video, or in the former video, we have deleted controllers and models. Let's do that here as well, because we don't need that to, uh, to understand the template. We want to understand what are these files and how are they connected and how does the app actually run? Where does it start? For that, you would have to know that uh, the Apple documentation tells you that the main.swift file is the implicit entry point of your application and you can't change that. That's default. Meaning that file here is an exceptional file uh, called main.swift that is uh, allowed to, um, to define or actually do top level expressions such as calling a function, right? Like, really, like literally executing code uh, on a top level without having it encapsulated inside a class, inside a struct or somewhere else. So if we run that, all right, it will not work because we have to delete something further. Uh, we will have to delete everything inside configure except for the router. We don't have to have the whole configuration in order to un understand what's happening here. And for router, let's def delete everything except for it works. And let's define it works like that, more expressive, more verbose, and run that. Now that should spin up our server at localhost 8080, and we are good, so it returns it works. If you have missed the first episode how to, or first video how to set up a Vapor project, check out the description, I have put the links down below. Okay, so main.swift is our entry point of our application, so that is the code that gets executed. If we command the whole code out and run the app, so basically we are not executing any code. Yes, we have files defined. Yes, in these files we have functions defined, but they are never called, never executed. So that here, if we now refresh the site, it just does nothing. If we have a, a small look into app, what it actually does is roughly saying, just looking at what it returns, it returns an application, right? It creates an instance of application and returns it at the end and then that instance that gets returned by that call of that function, uh, we would call run on that instance. So let's just go and define an application. Application. Uh, oh, yeah, we don't uh, know about application because we haven't imported Vapor. So we are having an application instance that expects um, configuration environment and services. And if we look yeah, let's do that as well. And it's nothing complicated with that because uh, all these struct, config, environment, and services are all three structs. They have default, uh, they have static functions that will return default instances for these structs. For example, config.default would return um, a default configuration. Environment.detect, in this case, would return a um, let's say default environment and services.default would return a default instance for services. So we have that instance of application and then we can just say application.run and then okay that throws and the application also throws and that is the whole Vapor application. So it again runs the server 
And these files are not uh, used whatsoever at this case, uh, at this point, right? Because that's the only file that gets executed. And inside here, we have only done that part of code. If we refresh, we get a response, but we get a response not found because we haven't like defined any roots in a router and then made our application aware of that router. That basically is just an application with default configuration, default environment and default services. And in order to define some roots and make our application aware of roots or of the router that defines the roots, right? We would have to define a router that is an engine router and also use the static default function to get a default instance of that router. And then we can say, okay, let's have, um, let's define a root at or a URL or a path at the index and return return hey listen when that index is called if we run that and now refresh our page still nothing is handled because yes we have just uh, declared a root uh, a router and have defined a root but then the codes end here and what we do next is define an application and run the application but we never made our router uh, we never passed our router into the application or made our application aware of the router, right? So let's, uh, how do we do that? Um, we are making, we have to actually register our router as a service inside services, inside, a, inside the instance of services. So let's just put services outside into a variable like that and pass services into our application. Uh, let's like that. We haven't changed anything, right? We have just defined a variable, but now we are able to also, before we pass it into application, uh, we are also able to say services register an instance of services as a type. And so the instance of service is router and the type, type is router.self. So we are registering our router. Basically we are uh, making a variable router, um, defining some roots, then we are making a variable services that has to be a var, uh, passing in or registering our router that has some roots in it uh, as a service. And then we're passing that service into our application and then run the application. So now we have made our application aware of our router. And if we run that and refresh, hey, listen, comes as a return if we are actually calling or firing at the index. That's awesome. That's kind of easy. And that's the whole vapor application at the moment, right? So that's the very bare minimum that is needed to get a vapor application up and running. So what we can do next is basically, um, for example, we have router and we are defining roots, right? And when we start defining more and more roots, let's say for, whoops, let's say for user, we want to return Zelda that can get a very large file, right? And then we are, if we call user, it will re return Zelda. If we continue and if we have logic inside of here, inside of our closure, that can get a little, like pretty large. And so why don't we just define a function, let's call it roots, that expects a router of type engine router and then define all the roots inside there. So we basically encapsulate the definition of roots inside a function. And after we have, after we have initiated our router, we can just call that function roots, pass in our router, and then register it as a, ser a service. Because at this point, it will define all, of, all the roots for us. And that's basically what is done uh, we can just cope or actually cut this out and create a new file called roots and put it inside here. And that's basically what it's done. This is just a function called roots that expects a router. So you are able to define all your roots inside of this file, right? So that is that. So that is roots.swift. And uh, resolved. Yeah, so that is existing again. Same goes for for configurations, for example, registering a router to the service is kind of a configuration thing to do. So let's just define a function that is called configure 
and you, you see already where this is going, that expects, let's say, a service of type services, services, and there's a catch. So be aware of that in a second, um, that we have to adjust that function uh, for that catch. So inside here, we are aware of service, or we can actually call it services because it is uh, of type services. And we can put that services inside here and call configure passing in services. All right, so here's the catch. The catch is that service, the instant services uh, that has, yeah, we will fix that in a second. The instant services, if we look here, it's a it's an extension of services. If we look there, it's a struct. A struct is a value type. That means that whenever we are passing an instance of that struct, let's say into a function, right? We're passing here our instance. It arrives here and it is not passed in by reference. It is passed, it's not even passed in at all. There a copy is made from that original instance inside of here and then we are using the copy of it. So what we do is, uh, all right, yeah, we haven't, or we haven't refactored router into our uh, configure as well. So we can basically put the whole router stuff inside of this function. So defining a router, uh, calling the roots file and then registering it here. Um, so what we do is we are registering our router inside a copy of our services and then the code and then the code ends and the original instance is not aware of the router at all because that's just it is passed not passed into it so we have to fix it by passing in the re reference by putting in out in front of it and then an and or ampersand in front of services so we're passing in the reference into this function so the real instance of services is used here and the router is registered at the real instance and so then we can pass in the services, which is then aware of the router into our application. And why don't we just put that whole configure stuff into another file called configure. And then yes, it also has config and environment passed into, but that's basically, if we would do that config, right, in out config, that's just so you can adjust even more and end is in out. Uh, in out environment so we so you are able to let's just do that for a second and understand why so that is then configure dot swift so you are able to also manipulate config and environment inside of this function and this one has to be a right environment Environ, environment like that. And we are calling then, oh yeah, and then instead of having the instance right away passed here, let's just make also a var config and pass in the config variable. And also instead of having the instance right away, let's have an env and also env variable right here. And then we can just call configure and then passing, for example, config and in our services. Bef and we are passing in by reference because all these things are structs. This one is throwing, I guess. And once they are manipulated inside of this function, we can pass these instances that were originally manipulated into our application and then run it. And now we could just say, yeah, let's uh, refactor that one into an own file. And that's basically how this file like looks like it's just this one and all it does is what we just discussed and that is basically already the whole application if we run that you will understand that um your server get like spins up and starts and runs everything worked and everything works as expected and we have skipped the boot.swift file yeah we have skipped that because if we look back in our main originally the app function is called and passes in the environment default uh, instance like um, that you get by calling dot detect, right? Inside app, the function, here's the environment. Inside app, there's a in default config created, a default service created, and then configure, configure is called, and then 
after configure is called, a application is created based on these default implementations. And then before it returns the application, it will then finally uh, call boot, passing in the application as well. And application is a class, that's why it's not passing it by ref that's why it's passed in by reference by default. Classes are passed in by reference and structs are not passed in by reference. That's why we have to define uh, in out and an ampersand to do that. And that is also the explanation why we can um, just call router uh, like that, let's say here, and are not passing in reference because engine router is also a class and is a reference type. And that when we pass in a class in here, it's not copied, it's the original class or the ori original instance of router. And when we manipulate it, we are manipulating the original instance that we passed in here into the function. I hope it's not too complicated and why, like here's the function it's called up there. Here's the instance that we pass in here to then manipulate it <laughs> whatsoever. I mean, you, you can just revert the video and look at uh, from the beginning once again, where we had zero lines of code, right? All right. And so basically the app function before it returns the app to then call run on that app, it is like calling another function. It could have been called whatever, but it's called boot. And that's just doing nothing. Like it's just a function called boot that expects the application. And you could, if you wanted to, and if you would know, if you would know what to do, you could actually uh, go here and say, okay, before I before the app uh, spins up and runs, I want to manipulate it in some sort of whatsoever, whatever you want to do with that app here, right? Mm -hmm. So you were able to be just before it runs to manipulate it in the last instance. Or at the last, at the last, or it's your last chance basically to manipulate it. So yeah, that's basically the whole vapor application in one file. Uh, but you now understand how to actually refactor it into own files and why these files are existing and why they are, uh, how they are connected. And it's basically just to have a cleaner architecture and uh, help you uh, getting started. Yeah. That's basically the video. I hope you understood now how everything is interconnected. Is that a word? I hope so. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to write them in the comment section as well as join the Vapor Discord community. Link is in the description because uh, there are thousands of people waiting for your questions. And it's not just me, just one person. So the chance to get an answer is way higher. Also subscribe and like if you don't want to miss out on future videos about Vapor as well as on iOS. And check out the description box for my social media and my Patreon to support me doing YouTube full time. Have a great day. See you next time. Bye.